Tema Steg. Hi. Welcome to Heart of Hollywood magazine. Thank you for having me. Tell us, what's on your mind these days? Well, I've been thinking quite a bit about the Oscars. They were just this past weekend. And uh, I've been thinking about how a lot of women didn't get the nominations that they deserved. A lot of women did. I was very excited about Mandy Walker. A little bit sad that she didn't get the win, even though she did win at the ASC Awards. And that was a little bit of an upset for me. Um, but otherwise, I thought there was a lot of beauty to it. So. Now, there was another event uh, just this last Monday, the next day after the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us about that. Well, um, apparently, I'm LA County Woman of the Year. Apparently, they didn't know me in high school, just saying. <laughs> very good. So, uh, and what did that entail? There was a very nice luncheon. The mayor was also honored. Um, and 12 women total were honored from the different count, um, different districts in Los Angeles. Uh, very, very high powered, really exciting women. I felt truly honored to be among them. Uh, and I had a lot of really great people come to support me at my table. People have been longtime supporters of women in media and the work that I've done. So it was a very emotional and a very inspiring event, hmm. and I'm still recovering. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> so what comes to my mind um, in looking at you, your work, um, what you've been involved with, is someone making a difference. Someone Thank caring, you. someone applying themselves, stepping out. Um, uh, can you speak to that? Because there, you, there was a, a point at which you, you made a decision. And you said, I think there's something that needs to be addressed here, and maybe I'm someone to, to, to apply myself to that. Well, uh, I didn't start out thinking I was ever going to be executive director of a nonprofit organization, but over many years, I found that people were putting roadblocks in my way strictly because I was female. I had always applied myself at anything I could wanted to do. My parents told me I could do anything I wanted to do as long as I, you know, got good grades and worked really hard and all of that. Um, and I found there were people who would straight up tell me, oh, you can't do that. Women don't do that. Girls don't do that. And I found it very, very frustrating. So at one point I thought, well, I can just be frustrated and angry and bitter, or I can try to change things and make it better for other people and hopefully myself as well uh, with a multi-pronged approach because a lot of people weren't really concerned with women in the crew. They were more concerned about having more women directors. And if you think about it, the director is a department of one. The camera department is a department of many, art department, department of many, even grip, dolly. Um, you know, DITs, like there's a whole world of crew and women either weren't getting the jobs, they didn't know about those jobs, but these are really great sustainable jobs uh, where you can make pretty good money in the industry and do quite well. So I thought, well, if we can get more women into those positions, uh, that will change the industry exponentially very quickly. And that's been the goal, to make the industry more equitable as soon as possible. How are we doing? You commented upon your disappointment with the Oscars. That's uh, duly, duly noted, mm -hmm. but in general, how are we doing? Well, you know, before we went 501c3, no women had been nominated for, in cinematography for an Oscar. Now we've had a few. My feeling now is that we can have more than one woman nominated for an Oscar in cinematography. The world will not fall off its axis if we have two or three or four women being nominated. And there certainly are a number of women who are working on bigger budget, high production films. Certainly this year, there were a number of them who really should have been nominated. And women in the past who should have been nominated, who just were overlooked or dismissed. And partly because people uh, sometimes just don't look at our work. So in service to, I think that's one phrase that comes to my mind in terms of that, that work. You also are uh, highly educated, highly trained, skilled professionally yourself. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's a part of you. 
um, is that is that something you're you're able to to spend time with as well? So I started as a production designer and scenic artist and art director, and then through Women in Media, I started producing our short films through the Camaraderie Initiative, um, and I really love doing that through Camaraderie Initiative. I've gotten a lot of experience. Um, with all the departments, I feel like I have an understanding of how the departments work together in a way that I didn't prior to producing those projects and having all the education that came with it. We've done a lot of learning conventions where I've been able to have a deep dive and also the privilege of meeting with the people who are teaching a lot of uh, these classes and other panels and so forth, I can talk to them in advance and really pick their brains to find mm -hmm. out more about the newest technology, like volumetric production and VR production. I have the privilege of being able to talk to them and learn more all the time. And if you're not always learning, you're just going backwards as far as I'm concerned. So you have to have a curious mind, I think, to stay young and happy, at least for me. I think that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's not uncommon among people in the, the creative industries. Yeah. But you've also spent time as an educator. I have. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, I found that the educational work I've done as a professor has really helped me understand how people learn. And that's a big component of women in media, how people inhale information um, and also how they inhale information um, in terms of changing their minds. So for people who may not think there are women to hire, there may not be women who are qualified, finding ways to help them learn with a multi-pronged approach, it helps them understand that those people do exist and that they should be hiring them. And people learn differently, right? Some people learn when they hear things some people learn when they see things, and some people learn when they touch things and draw or write. So I try to find multiple ways to get my point across to people when I can. Wonderful. Mm. Uh, have you had a chance to take any time off? <laughs> You're hilarious <laughs> and adorable. No. Yeah. Any plans? Well, I actually joined a club to force myself to take an hour off here and there. Excellent. Yeah, no, it's Wonderful. good. It's well very good. I am going to New Zealand uh, in a few months to kind Wonderful. of take a break and be with family. But other Wonderful. than that, like, there's no rest for the wicked. How long will that trip last? That will be an entire month. Very good. But I will not be resting. I will still be working, as yeah. always. But at least I'll have some time off, which is good. But, well, you know, the, this kind of work, you really don't, um, you don't have the time. There's too much to be done. I was talking with um, the gentleman in charge of the security for the Academy Awards. Mm. Yeah. And it just in passing. And uh, uh, I'd known him for any number of years. And I remember he just recently said to me, I touched base with him, and he said, uh, I thought I heard, heard him saying, crime never sleeps. Yeah. And I thought to myself, did he really just say that? But similarly, I think in, in creative, in the creative field, I think it's particularly challenging, it's particularly competitive. Um, it is something that demands a lot of us and can be very challenging as to know when we can take a moment and, and, and breathe, as it mm -hmm. were, or, or rest on our laurels, which hopefully you had a moment to do at the uh, that awards ceremony Monday. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. I, it was very touching, and I was very appreciative of the people who nominated me and who made it happen. It really... Uh, was quite a moment for me. When I found out about it, I was in utter shock. Uh, and I had been on the uh, on a Zoom call with my grants and fundraising team. Mm. And I took my headphones off. I was like, oh, it's the government. I better, like, you know, take this. Nice, <laughs> like, nice. what I do? <laughs> nice, nice. So, like, I, I'm on the phone with the lady. And I'm like, what? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. What? And I was like, hold on. I have to write this down because I'm a tactile learner. I had to write it down in order to, like, inhale it mm. and understand it and I was like okay I need you to repeat that to me one more time because it wasn't you know coming through Interesting. so but it's been quite an experience well what comes to mind is the uh, tipping points uh, because I know that Heart of Hollywood reached out to you mm. and that was previous 
through actually having received that that, mm -hmm. uh, that distinction. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very interesting because um, specifically the um, the CEO of Heart of Hollywood, I guess, felt <laughs> that a similar sensibility that, okay, here's someone that needs to be recognized, that needs to be put forward, and then learned subsequently that you had been recognized for that honor. Yeah, I'm so grateful. Yeah, we met at our holiday toast where we recognize mm. Mm. Uh, women who are making history now in our industry. And it was quite a wonderful event. So I was thrilled to meet her. Um, and we hit it off, and she invited me to do this. And I'm very happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking the time. Thank you. You're welcome. Temestate, part of Hollywood Magazine. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.